Hello everyone, I'm Rick Jansen. Welcome to my fly bench. The baby damsel is a hot item these days and there's good reason why. In the early spring these little critters are available to the trout in very shallow water and they can be quite active. Makes them an easy target for the trout. The key about these flies is they've got to be smaller than your regular damsel and you have to be able to move them slowly. I tie mine on a jig hook so it can be hung under an indicator. Having said that, let's take a look at the rest of the materials you're going to need to tie this dandy little fly. Alright everyone, into my vise I have a 60 degree size 12 Togans jig hook and of course you can tie these down to number 16's, there will be some slight modifications to the materials then I'll, I'll mention and to that I have added a 764 fluorescent chartreuse a slotted tungsten bead. It's got to be a slotted bead so it sits properly on the shank of the hook there. Regular bead won't sit right up against the eye. In behind that we're coming in with our 70 denier light olive tying thread and we're going to lock that bead into place with the thread there and you can tell when you've got the slotted tungsten bead on correctly it just sits properly against the eye of the hook and, uh, and locks into place nicely with the thread. So now I've got some thread in there, that bead is locked into place, we'll cut off the tag end. And the first thing we come in with is our marabou tail. Now I'm using select marabou plumes in green. And it could be an olive, you could vary the color of course depending on the damselflies in the waters you fish. I've seen them in, in a tan and dark brown too. Or even a sort of a pale washed out yellow. And so I've got the tips here and I'm going to tie this in and I want the tail to be about the same length as the body and so I'm coming in here and just trying to to gauge that and back it up a little bit until I've got about the same length of the body in there and I can go a little bit long if I need to because I can tear off the uh, the excess so I'll just tie those in right behind the bead and then slightly pulling the marabou toward myself wind the thread back on the hook wrapping down on that marabou until I get it opposite to where the barb would be. Okay, now you can see that tail's a little bit too long. So I just come in here and I'll deal with that later actually. I'm going to cut off these tag ends here. Right behind the eye. And then we come in with our uh, super floss in pale olive. Larva lace super floss in pale olive. And it's a quite a stretchy material. So I come in behind the, uh, bring the thread back up to the bead, come in behind the bead, pull down until that super floss is tucked in behind the bead there. Sometimes it takes more than one trial there. There we go. And then I pull it, once I've got a three or four wraps on, I pull it tight because I want it to lay down thin on the body as I'm going to keep the body slender, especially toward the rear. And then bring our thread back forward to just about, about a eye length behind the bead there. Now without uh, stretching it, now on the smaller versions you would stretch it uh, to keep it thinner, but on this size I'm not stretching it, I just want to wrap it and create the segmentation on the abdomen portion of the nymph here. So you can see as that's wrapping and I'm, I'm just very, just enough tension to to keep it going forward uh, and wrapping smoothly on the body and then we'll get up to the thread here and tie off. Get a few wraps and as I get a few more wraps I can pull tighter on the 
on the larva lace because I'll want it, the uh, tag end to tuck underneath once I, once I decide to cut it off. So I'm pulling quite taut on that now. It's well wrapped in there and that tag end just disappears under the wraps there. Now I come in with just the smallest amount of diamond dub in this pale olive color uh, just to build up a little bulk at the uh, thorax region. It's not much, it's just a very small pinch. Um, on the smaller versions of this fly I'd forego the dubbing altogether. But here on this one I want a little bit to build up some bulk here just before the straggle string goes in. And then finally we come in with our olive straggle string in pale olive. And of course vary the color of that too. And this just uh, gives us a form of legs up at the front of the fly. So we get that tucked in there behind the bead pull down on it and wind it back through the dubbing and then forward and then we're going to wrap that forward in a number of wraps just to give that straggly set of legs that the damp are so prominent on damselfly nymphs and then we get that tied off here and uh, just doing I used a short little tag in here left over from a previous fly so normally this would be a little easier to do but I want to use the materials to be frugal and there we got go we've got that uh, cinched off very simple fly to tie now the reason you want to fish this slowly is because in the waters in the early spring that you're fishing them with is uh, quite cool and the fish are moving slowly they don't really want to chase fast things down if you fish them like a normal damsel you might have interest but they'll give up if it's uh, moving too fast as you're stripping it through the water. So I like to hang this under an indicator. It can be as little as two feet of water or, or uh, you know, up to six or eight feet, but they're usually in the shallows and often there's another insect or two hatching at the same time. And uh, so hang it under an indicator. You'll do really well with these when they're about. Now I've given that a whip finish. I'm going to give it a second one just to ensure it there. Um, and there we go, we've got your baby damsel. And I'm just gonna adjust the length of that tail a little bit and just pinch off those ends there a little bit. So we've got some, not too, too long, but length of the body. And uh, you're gonna enjoy some great success with this little fly. It's uh, very buggy looking, very imitative of the natural. And uh, you can, again, you can vary the colors, vary the bead color, uh, vary the colors of the tail. Uh, but it really does a good job of representing the immature nymph before they fully uh, grow into their pre-emergent uh, size. So uh, if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing if you haven't already. And uh, you can share this video with your friends. Have a great season out there. Thank you for watching.